Welcome to Clockmaker Watchmaker Lathe Basics. I'm John Tope and today we're going to talk about lathes. Many of you who are watching this may already have a lathe, uh, maybe sitting on a shelf collecting dust, or maybe you were told that you need to have a lathe in order to do your watch or clock repair, but you really don't know much about it or what you're supposed to do with it. You could be thinking of buying a lathe, but you're concerned about what kind to buy, what accessories do you need, how do you know what you're buying is the right lathe? How do you know if you're not buying something that was someone else's problem and they're trying to get rid of it? You may ask yourself, what do I look for when buying a lathe? How do I know I have the correct parts for this lathe? You may have some of these questions about your own lathe. Uh, you want to know if it's a good one and if it works as it should. Uh, you would want to know how to adjust it and other such questions. Let's start with our first topic. When people talk about lathes, they usually call them either a watchmaker's lathe, clockmaker's lathe, or jeweler's lathe. These terms are interchangeable and refer to the same thing. There are primarily three types of lathes used in clock and watchmaking. There's the Geneva or Swiss lathe, the American Webster Whitcomb D-bed jeweler's lathe, or also known as WW lathes, which is an abbreviation of Webster Whitcomb, and the modern micro lathes like the Unimat or Sherline. The Geneva lathes came first, long before the evolution and existence of American lathes. They were the standards throughout Europe. These are very good lathes, but not as substantial in size and strength as the American lathes. Although very fine watches have been made on these lathes, we will be covering the American lathes since they have become most popular since the second half of the 19th century. The lathe bed of the Geneva, or Swiss lathe, is more round like a bar versus the American lathe which has the shape of, a, of the letter D. In the picture, the Geneva lathe looks like a very large lathe, but actually it's not. There are, they are a smaller statue, a stature than the American lathe. The diameter of the American lathe bed is about two inches. The approximate diameter of a Geneva bed is three quarters of an inch. The size of the lathe bed thickness is what gives the advantage to the American lathe. You will get you won't get any flexing on the lathe bed on an American lathe. The Unimat and Sherline lathes are modern lathes that are available new since they are currently in production. They are available with large number of accessories for many types of application in addition to clock and watch repair. The American lathes came into prominence in the second half of the 19th century with the advent of the Webster Whitcomb D-bed style lathes. This WW style became the standard for most all American lathes. Although they're referred to as American lathes, some were also manufactured in Europe. Most of all the lathe manufacturers are now out of business and we are left with all these lathes that were prolifically produced during the second half of the 19th century, especially the first half of the 20th century. There are a couple of companies that currently manufacture the American jeweler's lathe, but it will cost you a small fortune out of reach of most people. You can find good used lathes at reasonable prices that were made by numerous different manufacturers. Price-wise, based on today's prices, if you spend between $150 to $250 for the average basic lathe setup, you should end up with a nice lathe. If you spend less than $150 for a basic lathe outfit, not including accessories, either you got a great deal or maybe you bought someone else's problem. The additional accessories for the basic lathe can be more expensive than the actual lathe itself. For example, if you pay $200 for initial setup, it may cost you anywhere from $200 to $250 for a cross line. A full complement of additional tooling for your lathe would cost you well over $1,000. Since, the, since this is a beginner course, we will be discussing and learning the components of the basic lathe setup. There is so much that can be done with just the basic lathe setup the greatest part of your lathe work will be done with these basic components. We will look at a few accessories later uh, to make you aware of some of the available accessories. Many lathes out there have been around for 50, 75 or more years and are still in excellent condition. There are some that are in fair condition and some that are in poor condition. Something that does not look great could be a very good lathe. You need to know how to understand the differences. When you're looking for a lathe that might not look beautiful, but it could be much more functional than something that looks better. You do not have to have a lathe to take this course to view it and understand it. This course is also designed for someone who is interested in buying a lathe 
and wants to learn more about it and where to start. This course will give you a lot of background information, explanation of the parts, and what to look for and what to avoid. So when you decide to buy a lathe, you'll be informed and confident in your lathe selection.